Now, while the Tampa Bay Lightning are rightfully celebrating their second consecutive Stanley Cup victory with giant parade and everything that we're going to be seeing over the next week and a half, the NHL schedule does not pause for anyone, as obvious by the fact that the Seattle expansion draft is on July 21st of this year. Now, Seattle is going to take one player from every single team that isn't the Vegas Golden Knights, which means that 30 NHL teams have to expose a ton of players. They have to protect a ton of players. And in this video, which is going to be part one of two, we're going to be looking at who the Lightning might protect in the expansion draft. And ultimately, there are two different ways that they can do this. Let's jump into it. Now, with the Tampa Bay Lightning already in a cap crunch, they're already $3.5 million over the cap going into the 2021-2022 season. The Lightning need to lose someone of value in the expansion draft. And of value, I mean the contract value, not necessarily the player value. But in terms of protection list, there are two different ways that the Lightning can make this work. There's the 7-3-1, which means seven forwards, three defensemen, and one goaltender. And there's the 8-1, which means eight skaters and one goaltender. The 8-1 is usually used for four forwards, four defensemen, and a goaltender. Now, what does that mean for the Lightning? Well, let's do the easy part. The goaltender spot is going to be Andre Vasilevsky, uh, the greatest Lightning goaltender of all time. Is an easy shoe in, and you also need one player to expose in the expansion draft at each position. Luckily for the Lightning, even though Christopher Gibson and Curtis McElhaney are both unrestricted free agents, Spencer Martin was signed to a one year contract in the middle of the season. He will be exposed during the expansion draft. As we get to the skaters, I'm gonna go over the seven and three on who I think will be protected and who I think will be exposed. And then we'll transition over to the eight and one. Starting off with the seven and three, you have to protect three players because all three of them have no movement clauses. Steven Stamkos, Nikita Kucherov, and Victor Hedman make up the core of this team and all of them have no movement clauses. Andre Vasilevsky also has one, but he's a no brainer to protect because he's one of two goalies under contract. So with that in mind, Tembe Lightning need to protect five other forwards and two other defensemen. On the forward side of things, Braden Point really seems like a no brainer. The 25 year old is on the final year of his RFA contract making below $7 million somehow. And he is the face of the lightning in terms of the center position, the first line center. He's a playoff hero, easy protection for Braden Point. In my opinion, Yanni Gord is the next most important protection for the lightning. He's approaching 30, yes, and he's got a lot of mileage on him, yes. And he's got a lot more of his contract to go, yes but he has been a phenomenal piece for the Lightning. Whether it is in the second or the third line, he has performed as advertised since getting called up, even throughout his goalish streak of 2019-2020. Now, Andre Palat is a bolt for life, in my opinion, and I know that might not be the case, uh, especially the fact that he's no trade clause turns into a modified no trade clause this year. But in terms of the Seattle expansion draft, at least in the seven and three realm, I want to protect Andre Pilat. So that immediately has five members of the Lightning protected in terms of the forward side. Your next two are a little less obvious. Now, I would protect Anthony Sorelli. I think he is a pretty decent second line center. He is a phenomenal defensive center. And he's only 23 years old. He's on a good contract. Seattle would be very lucky to take Anthony Sorelli, which leaves the final spot up to, in my opinion, three different guys. Tyler Johnson, Alex Kalorn, and Matthew Joseph. Because I don't think that 
it's very likely that Seattle will take Joseph. However, still a young guy, still on a very nice contract, and the Lightning can look at it at their end of exposing him as we have other people to take over for him, which is the same thing that you can honestly say about Tyler Johnson and Alex Kalorn. So I'm going to protect Matthew Joseph. Now, Kalorn had an injury during the Stanley Cup Finals. I think that made suede Seattle from taking him. And Tyler Johnson is from Seattle, and he is the prime target for Seattle to take, which we will get into part two during this uh, two-part series. Going from the forward side to the defenseman side, this is where the 7-3 and three comes back to bite the lightning because you have four key defenders that you need to protect but you ultimately only have three slots to protect them. Victor Hedman takes up one of them, very deserving. Ryan McDonough probably takes up the other one, very deserving, which leads a toss-up between Mikhail Sergachev and Eric Chernak. I think the Lightning would want to go with Mikhail Sergachev. Ultimately, he is the younger of the two defensemen, even though Eric Chernak may be on the better contract in terms of AAV. The Lightning have so much room to grow with Mikhail Sergachev. And so that does leave the right side of defense very barren. But I don't think the Lightning are going to go 7-3, and which is where we get into the 8-1. and So with eight skaters and one goaltender, obviously the goaltender once again is Andre Vasilevsky. The eight skaters, we can go easily into the defense. Ryan McDonough, Victor Hedman, Mikhail Sergachev, Eric Chernak, all four of those guys are probably going to be protected in the eight and one. That does leave less forward spots for you. Again, Stamkos and Kudrow have to be protected. Braden Point is an obvious candidate to be the third one protected. And then you have a choice. Do you protect the bolt for life and Andre Pilat? Do you protect the tenacity of Yanni Gord? Do you protect Alex Kalorn, Tyler Johnson, Anthony Sorelli? Do you protect any of those guys? Ultimately, I'm going to go with the bolt for life because Andre Pilat just means a lot to this team. And he's an incredibly important playoff performer. He's been an exceptional regular season performer in the past couple of years. And I don't know if I can really handle Andre Pilat not being on this team, especially if it's just losing it for nothing in the expansion draft. Now, the Lightning are probably going to make trades in order to protect Gord and Sorelli and potentially Tyler Johnson and potentially Alex Klorn. Um, But we'll have to wait and see on that one. So that is going to do it for part one of the expansion draft videos. Part two of this video is going to come out when the Seattle expansion draft protection list come out for each team. And we'll see whether or not the Lightning do the seven, three and one or the eight and one models. And then from there, we'll talk about who the Lightning have exposed, who Seattle might take, and what kind of side deals the Lightning may make. But that is going to do it for us on this edition of The Bolt Report. Guys, our first video under the new tagline. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to give us a like, a share, a subscription. If you like what you saw, also make sure to follow us on Twitter at BoltReport underscore TB for all your news notes and game recaps. Once again, guys, thank you so much for watching. And remember, your Tampa Bay Lightning are still back-to-back defending Stanley Cup champions.